Well, good morning, YouTube. Well, guys, you probably saw the little short clip that I posted the other day installing the handlebars on the prison preacher's bike. Yeah, we call him prison preacher because that's what he does. He drives around the prisons on his motorcycle and he preaches to the inmates. Can't think of a better place where people might need to find God. Anyway, in that clip, you saw it without the handlebars on there. And as you can see here, I have the new handlebars in place. They were a little bit tricky to get in. So I think I actually underbid this job just a little bit when a prison preacher and I were having the conversation over the phone about the handlebar installation. I asked him specifically, uh, is this one where you want the wiring and everything run through the handlebars? Because they are a little bit more difficult to do than, than not. And he said, no, we're not going to do that. Just swap the bars out. And of course they're taller bars. So you've got to have the extended wiring, got to have extended brake line. And you've also got to have an extended clutch line because it does have a hydraulic clutch line. He insisted that we were not doing that. So when I first installed them, um, I did not run the control wiring through the bars. Now, the th throttle by wire for the acceleration has to go through the bars. There's no option on that, and I knew that. Um, so I had the bars installed with the throttle by wire wires going through, but not the actual switch housing extensions going in there. And then when I went to go put the clutch and the brake master cylinder assemblies back on, I realized there was no clearance because these bars don't have the cutout in the bottom. So if you look here at the old handlebars, there's this cutout on the bottom. And what that does is it gives clearance for the wiring that's gonna go behind the perch for the master cylinders to tuck up in there and not get pinched or crimped when you assemble them. The new handlebars do not have that recess. They just have a hole drilled in the bottom of the bar so that you can fit the wiring through. And uh, had I done it the first time, it wouldn't have been so bad. But having to go back and do it again, just added some more time to also, it. So you'll see the small hole drilled there and another one here. And that's on both sides of the handlebars. And those provisions are there because the factory wiring has got these little keepers that pop in there and keep the wires tidied to the handlebars. And these new handlebars do not have such provisions. Yeah, I probably could have drilled a hole in there, but we're not going to do sloppy work like that. I realize that the bars are meant to be installed a certain way. So I revamped and did it the right way. But unfortunately that took more time that I didn't justify in the uh, the original quote on this. And I'll just end up eating that cost most likely. You guys remember, I work on motorcycles because I love working on motorcycles. It's not really always about the money. So yeah, you know, this job should have taken about four hours to do. I'm gonna have more time into it than that just because I like to take my time. I like to go slow and I like to do things right. And uh, it's not always about the money. So as you can see here, I still do not have the hydraulic lines attached. Here is the old brake line, and you can see how short it is. That's as far as I can get it to pull. So we've got to run the new line all the way down to the brakes. And then same thing with the clutch. That hydraulic line is going to come down and come into the master cylinder, which is behind that cover. And uh, I'm hoping I can do it without having to pull the exhaust all the way so I think I'm gonna get this bike a little bit further up in the air just to make my job a little bit easier uh, doing the hydraulics and then we'll get back to it well guys some time has passed and I've got the bike up on the uh, the lift now so it's a little bit further off the ground easier to work on and as I pulled the cover off well I should say attempted to pull the cover off for where the slave cylinder comes in down here for the clutch I cannot get the cover all the way off with the exhaust in the way. So it looks like I'm gonna to have to pull the exhaust to put the new clutch line on. Um, then I got to looking at the brake lines and it's a three piece brake line kit. Now in a lot of situations uh, on a motorcycle, the front master cylinder will have a brake line comes down to a T-junction block, usually mounted underneath the lower triple tree clamp. And at that point it would split off and go to either brake line, but this is an ABS equipped motorcycle. so. The brake line goes from the master cylinder all the way to the back of the motorcycle to where the ABS modulator is. And then at that point, two separate individual lines run from the ABS module all the way back up to the front. Now, they do attach underneath that front triple tree, like I said, but they're not in a block. It's just a plastic cover that kind of shields the two lines as they come up. They've got a couple special bends there, and then they go straight down to the wheel. So there is no actual brake 
in the front brake lines between the caliper and the ABS module. This brake line kit is designed to replace all of the lines from the master cylinder all the way back to the ABS unit, and then the two lines running all the way from the ABS unit back up to the front wheel. Now, technically, I really don't have to replace the two lines that go to the calipers because that geometry isn't changing any. I only really need to replace the one line that goes from the master cylinder down to the ABS module. However, the kit that uh, Prison Preacher purchased, Prison Preacher purchased, yeah. Anyway, it's got three lines in it to do the whole thing. So if I'm gonna go through the trouble of doing all the work, might as well go ahead and do all three of them. And that way he's got the nice stainless steel braided lines all the way around. So in order to do this job, I'm also gonna have to remove the seat, remove the fuel tank to be able to run those lines. And it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to bleed the system. In fact, on these newer style Harley Davidsons uh, with the ABS to properly bleed the system, you need to really hook it up to like the twin tech tool so that you can modulate the valve that's inside the ABS unit after you've done a primary bleed on it. Um, I've not found it always necessary to do, but if we're gonna go this far into it, it's gonna introduce a lot of air to the system. And there's a great likelihood we'll need to do that. And I don't have that tool. So I'll have to find a source. Someone will let me borrow a tool or maybe I'll have to buy uh, a tool. I don't know. I don't know how we're gonna do it yet. Maybe I'll just have him take it to a dealership or somebody afterwards and they can do that final little step on it. But uh, I don't see any way around doing it. Well, before doing that, I think what I'm gonna do just to make sure that I need to is I'm gonna take off the rest of the headlight housing assembly and see how much more slack I can get out of these lines. So like this brake line right here for the front actually goes in and it loops around. So I'm wondering if I can reroute it some. So I know that when using handlebars that are a 13 to a 14 inch rise, sometimes taking that slack out will be just enough to be able to reach the master cylinders. However, these bars are a 16 inch rise and that's pushing the limits of what we can safely do. But it only takes me about 10 minutes or so to pull this headlight housing apart. And truth is, it's got to be done anyways. It'll make it a whole lot easier to route the, the lines with it off anyhow. So maybe I'll get lucky and I won't need to replace these lines unless he absolutely insists on it. But let's get to this and see. Okay, so I rerouted those hoses and, you know, on the clutch side, it works out pretty well. I got the hose going all the way up. I had to reroute its routing. Instead of coming through here and around the front and then up, I ducked it underneath the steering stem part of the frame and it works well. However, the brake side, not so good. And as it's attached right here, see, I've got full movement. That would work just fine. However... Once I put the actual headlight assembly back on here, that's gonna add just a little bit more dimension. So with it in place, it's gonna put more pressure on this to keep it back like that, which works going to the right, but coming to the left, I'm worried about things pinching and binding there because they're not round, routed properly. All right guys, and you know how I am. If it's not done right, I'm not doing it. So looks like we're gonna have to tear the rest of the bike apart and replace all of the lines with the new lines that the customer supplied, which is probably what he wants anyways. I just wanted to try to save him a few dollars because that's going to be another couple hours worth of labor. Um, and whether I actually bill him for it or not, I don't know, but we'll just have to see. But I think that's going to be it for right now. It is brutally cold out here. When I came out this morning, it was only about 22 degrees, and the high today only got up to about 33, and that didn't last very long. Now, it's getting fairly late in the evening, and uh, the temperature is really starting to drop again. And I've got no heat out here in the shop. So I'm quite chilly. And I don't really want to go too much further on this tonight. So we will finish it on another day. Well, guys, I think we're going to end this one here. I know we didn't finish the project in this video. But I'm sure there will be a follow-up video that will show the completion of it. So I want to thank you guys for watching. And uh, until the next time I see you, keep those engines running.